Welcome to another episode of the Jam Pack Report, the day for February the 4th of 2021. Of course, this is a daily gaming news podcast, bringing you everything you need to know from around the industry, right here on YouTube and on podcast services around the world five days a week. It's really your one-stop shop for everything you need to know. And let me tell you, today we're kicking off your Thursday in the best possible way. Not with a warm cup of coffee. I mean, you can if you want. We're kicking it off with some patent infringement, because that really gets the blood pumping, does it not? Valve has been ordered to pay $4 million in damages after they have lost their controller patent lawsuit. $4 $4 million in damages is being paid to Ironberg Inventions, the parent company of Scuff Gaming, but that could be more if the judge so chooses because this lawsuit was deemed to be a willful patent infringement by the jury. So Valve has willfully ignored the patent held by Scuff Gaming, and you might recognize the name Scuff for that line of controllers that was very, very popular uh, whenever I was coming up in 2010, 2011, 2012, uh, especially within the Call of Duty community because they added additional buttons and, very importantly, back paddles to their design that added additional functionality that base controllers simply do not. So this back paddle design was actually implemented on the Steam controller from Valve. This is that strange controller that came out a couple of years ago and it essentially replaced the analog sticks with touchpads and, very importantly, on the back, this back paddle design. It might not have been as intricate as what Scuff Gaming brought to the table, but that functionality was patented. That idea, that whole setup, was something that Scuff completely and totally owned. Now, for those that are tuned into the gaming industry on a pretty frequent basis, you might be saying, Sam, the Xbox Elite controller also has this functionality. Yes, because Xbox paid roughly $6 million to license that technology and make that line of Elite controllers. Valve never asked, never attempted, and never even thought about asking for the patent. And so, that is where they found themselves before this lawsuit, and now after it's over, they are paying at least $4 million. The lawsuit was originally set at $11 million. That is what uh, the Ironberg Inventions company actually wanted from the very beginning, and then that was lowered to $6 million to be more in line with the Xbox uh, patent uh, cost. But ultimately, it comes down to the fact that Valve absolutely dodged a bullet here and tried to uh, go around the patent that was required to bring this technology to market. And that's just not the way you do things. You don't steal someone else's idea. That's something I've always tried to drive home here on the Jam Pack Report. It's very important uh, to do what you can uh, and to do your due diligence and avoid any kind of copyright infringement, trademark infringement, any kind of patent infringement. Bring your own stuff to the table because that's the value that you bring to the market. And of course, the Steam Controller did not bring that much value to the market. In fact, most people know it as either A, the weird controller, or B, the $5 controller that was on sale on Steam very, very frequently uh, during pretty much any big seasonal sale. So it didn't really shake the industry like many people thought that it would. And while it was a cool idea, uh, I don't think it really did make any kind of impactful, lasting uh, change in Valve as an organization or in the lives of many who purchased it. Uh, But that is where the Valve Steam Controller has ended up. And it looks like Scuff Gaming slash Ironberg Inventions is going to be getting a little influx of money from Valve. It's also important to note that $4 million is nothing to Valve. That is just a drop in the bucket. They are the owners of Steam, the curators of the PC gaming space. There is nothing uh, about $4 million that is really worrying to them. From an outsider's perspective, I don't look at the financial documents outside of what's released in press releases, uh, but it doesn't seem like that's going to be a super impactful, uh, harmful route for them to take to just pay this company what they absolutely deserve because of, you know, the uh, theft of their idea. Just my two cents, though. Now, moving on, a big story that dropped this morning. Codemaster shareholders have approved EA's $1.2 billion acquisition. 63 of these 76 shareholders approved the acquisition during a meeting, which equates to about 99% of those shareholders. So, ultimately, it comes down to the fact that now the Codemasters acquisition is going through. A court hearing will be held on February 16th, with a finalization coming by the end of the current quarter. For those that are just tuning into the situation, Take-Two Interactive had originally outbid Electronic Arts, but EA came back with a $1.2 billion counteroffer that upended the process and changed its course, and it was something that I had personally never seen in the gaming industry before. 
So their plans for Codemasters are annualized racing franchises, which the company has basically been doing regardless, and so they're just continuing on that path. But now Electronic Arts is beginning to beef out what it is creating in the racing space because it does have an incredible amount of potential. I'm excited about the future. I'm hesitant because any kind of acquisition always makes people a bit nervous. Whether it's a small business or whether it's one of these uh, trillion dollar companies, it's very, very uh, nerve wracking to wonder what is going to happen in the future. What is this company's project pipeline going to look like? Are these going to be improved uh, by this acquisition or are the projects going to be harmed by it? These are all things that come to mind and time will really tell. Uh, but. I'm excited about the future. I love what Codemasters brings. They have some fantastic franchises out there. Dirt, of course, is the one that comes to mind. And their recent release, Dirt 5, uh, from what I understand, did perform pretty well since it did launch alongside this new generation of consoles. And it took advantage of a lot of what they were able to bring to the table. Uh, but I'm looking forward to seeing the future of Codemasters here and what these annualized franchises will look like. Uh, will it be dirt? Will they be brought on and, and moved to another part of the organization to work on something else? Uh, we will see what comes of it. I don't think dirt's going anywhere, though. So I'm excited to see the future plans for that company. And to round out today's show, Electronic Arts has made $3 billion in Star Wars revenue over the course of the past roughly 10 years. $3 billion in Star Wars revenue has been generated since EA was named the sole proprietor of Star Wars in the gaming space in 2012. It's important to note that they did come in and KOTOR was already happening, so revenue immediately started from the very beginning. But 52 million units have been sold across Battlefront, Battlefront 2, Star Wars Squadrons, and Jedi Fallen Order, along with $1 billion in revenue from Galaxy of Heroes alone, a free-to-play entry on mobile devices. That's a lot of money, and for good reason, because some of these games have been very, very good. Some of them had a rocky start. Battlefront 2 comes to mind. But if you've been keeping up with the news, that one was given away for free as part of an Epic Games promotion a couple of weeks ago, and there are now many more people playing this game. And over the course of the past few years, it has improved greatly uh, when it comes to perception from the public eye, because it went from being the game that was riddled with microtransactions uh, to one that is actually a very good time and one of the best representations of a first-person shooter in the Star Wars space ever created. Uh, very impressive to see the turnaround on that one. On top of that, I think Galaxy of Heroes should be talked about here with $1 billion in revenue from a mobile game alone. Uh, like I said, that shows the power of mobile. But the future of the company has been questioned because of that exclusivity agreement ending. A couple of weeks back, Lucasfilm Games was re-established and announced that they are going to be opening up the Star Wars IP to more people around the gaming space. Electronic Arts will no longer have that exclusivity when it does come to an end. And that includes a new game coming from Ubisoft Massive, which is a, you would say, massive announcement. Uh, and so with more of these games on the way, the future was beginning to kind of waver in the Star Wars space for EA, but Andrew Wilson was quick to calm the nerves, saying, quote, I don't think you should imagine that the fact that some other people will build some Star Wars games is going to change our commitment to that IP and our ability to build the appropriate number of games. He continued later, we are excited by what we'll be able to do in the future, but you should not read this as necessarily us building fewer titles. That means that they are going to continue their track, uh, and they have said that they are going to continue building the franchises that they already have in place. I'm sure we will see another Battlefront. I am sure we will see a sequel to Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order. Star Wars Squadrons, I don't know if it's going to warrant a sequel, uh, just because... It's good the way that it is. It's a budget Star Wars flight sim, and it's very good at what it does. I love Star Wars Squadrons. Uh, but the future of EA is certainly still in Star Wars. I don't think it's going to be the foundation of EA, and it isn't today. Uh, but for this IP to open up is certainly a healthy thing for it, and I'm excited to see what adventures uh, people create and what games are developed because of this new availability. Uh, but still, $3 billion in Star Wars revenue across 52 million units sold in less than 10 years is a very impressive run, and EA should be applauded for it. Now, have they done the best with the IP? No. But I'm one that thinks they didn't do that bad either. 
But that rounds out today's episode of the Jam Pack Report. If you enjoyed today's show, drop me a like down below and let me know what stories caught your eye. How do you feel about Valve losing that controller patent lawsuit? Are you a big fan of Electronic Arts? Do you think they'll handle Codemasters well? And how do you feel about Star Wars generating $3 billion in revenue for the gaming giant? Would love to hear what you have to say. But until tomorrow, you guys have a fantastic rest of your day. I'll talk to you soon and peace.